Hey guys, today we're doing something a little bit different. I am going to be sculpting things from clay. On Instant Influencer, there was an episode about sculpting things from clay. And I was also talking to my friend Joseph from the show, and he thought it would be really cool if we did a collaboration video on that topic. So Joseph will also be posting a collab video on his channel, and I will link it below. I really don't have much experience with clay. I have one, no, two videos. I did one video on Baby Yoda a really long time ago, and then I also also did a clay Christmas ornament video last Christmas, and that is pretty much the extent of my clay experience on YouTube. I know nothing about clay is what I'm telling you. One of the main reasons I kind of hate clay, I am like really weak, case in point. <laughs> I'm not very strong. It hurts my hands. And maybe I'm just like the weakest person on earth, but there has to be someone else that is feeling like they are too weak to use clay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What am I'm getting on a rant. Let's get started with this video and see what I can come up with. Okay, so I'm taking out my clay tools. There are a bunch of things that I have barely used. I actually purchased these tools for a sculpting course in college, which I then had to drop because I couldn't fit it with my engineering courses. I don't know what any of this is. An egg? Unclear. Someone commented what the sponge was for a while ago and I forgot. I also have this very long marshmallow skewer that I'm going to be cutting for, well, something that I did not use. These came with fake succulents from the Dollar Tree and I thought I would use it for this clay until I realized my clay has to be baked. That is plastic, plastic melts. Please ignore this. The wooden dowel is freed and it's time to take out my clay. This is a pencil case full of clay with a glossy sculpy thing. Not sure what it's called. I'm starting off with this white piece of clay and I'm creating the inside to, well, probably the most difficult thing I could possibly create as a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. The clay was extremely tough to work with, and by the end of the video, my palms felt like they had been bruised. Despite my apparent lack in strength, I was able to knead each of these colors into clay that was mushy enough to use. Back to the pink, and we're dividing it into a bunch of tiny spheres. I took my wooden marshmallow skewer from earlier and stuck it in the center, and I am going to be creating a bunch of flower petals. More more specifically, rose petals. My method for creating the petals was to take the ball, mush it against my palm, kind of mush it to the left, mush it to the right, and then roll it out with the wooden dowel. Sometimes I would flip the petal over and repeat this process until I had something that looked like a rose petal. So you might be asking yourself, Marissa, why create the most difficult thing possible when you are a beginner at clay and you hate it? Well, Jan, I have two answers for you. The first reason I decided to make a rose out of clay is because on Instant Influencer episode one, I created a flower out of construction paper and I got a lot of comments asking me how I made that flower. The truth is that process for creating the construction paper flower, the one from Instant Influencer, is extremely similar to the process for creating this clay flower. The main difference between the two are the petals. The petals on Instant Influencer were cut out from construction paper and the petals here are molded from clay. But the process for creating both the construction paper and the clay roses are basically the same. You start with a centerpiece and then you slowly add on petals to the outside. On the Instant Influencer flower, I was taping the petals together, but on this one it's clay, so I'm molding the flowers together. And my hand's orange. Washed those off and also repainted my nails. Taking out our yellow petal color, and we're gonna talk about my second reason for creating a rose. Yes, there are two reasons, remember? 
Well, Jan, I have two answers for you. The second reason is, well, I don't know if it's gonna be an unpopular reason, but it's certainly not something that most people do, at least as far as I know. When I'm a beginner at something and I don't know how to do it, I will generally choose something that is as hard as I can possibly do. For some reason, whenever I'm starting a project, I always want to do the most complicated thing possible. For me, the whole point of this is to learn as much as possible at one time. I don't really mind creating videos about me being bad at something or failing because I feel like everyone is bad at things when they're a beginner and if I've never tried it before, I'm obviously going to be not the best at it. My mentality towards learning has always been to try something as hard as I can possibly try, learn as much as I can at once, and then going forward I'll have a bigger skill set. It really does depend on your personal learning style. Everyone is different. Some people like to start slow and gradually build their knowledge over time, but I'm more the learner that when I know absolutely nothing, I really have to get a good overall survey of all the possibilities by just trying something that's almost impossible and failing sometimes. But actually, in the case of this rose, I don't think I failed. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how this rose came out. To finish to finish up this rose, I'm applying the Sculpey Gloss. It's kind of like varnish, it just makes everything really shiny. Checking if it's dry, and I'm glossing the bottom, shining the back side, buffing the, the bun. What am I saying? What? Here is what the final rose came out looking like. I am so pleasantly surprised by this. I really, really love it. I personally have had really bad experiences with clay in my minimal time, so I'm happy with it. Let's move on to make something else. I'm going to be using Chip and Sherry as inspiration for these next... <gasps> Up first, I'll be using Sherry or Sherry as Chip likes to say. For these next two clay pieces, I decided to make a miniature version of both Chip and Cherry. As it turns out, creating miniature versions of things from clay is actually much harder than it appears. I did eventually get this untangled. It's so hard to create little tiny mini pieces of clay. I almost feel like it would have been easier if I made these things life-sized. Mm, although I would have definitely run out of clay and my oven is not big enough. And now I will show you the minimal knowledge I have of clay. I know you make a diamond and you cut it in half and that is how you get two ears. I learned that from watching some YouTube videos. I also know that you should do this to the clay so it sticks together. I learned that from my three weeks of college where I took a sculpture class that I then had to drop because I had too many math classes. I had to create this swirly thing in a smaller form so it actually fit against this miniature berry tart. I'm rolling out a cylinder for the arms. I cut it in half and attached it. I also attached the two little triangle ears and used this tool, which I don't think it's the correct tool, to smooth it out. Notice that Cherry has a bunch of berries around her, so I am rolling those out. It's kind of like rolling a booger. Look at all these boogers. And then I very delicately placed each of the boogers around Cherry's cup. Just kidding, they, they are berries in case anyone needed me to clarify that. Cherry also has some whipped cream on her head, so I sculpted that. And then we are stabbing her some eye sockets. <laughs> Oh my god! Most of these tools look quite dangerous, if we're, if we're actually being honest. They look like shivs and knives. I tried my best to sculpt her a face. Kinda looks like she has a mustache now, but that's okay. She's going in. I burned her to a crisp. Have I ever told you how much I love my oven? We're losing her. Claire, we're losing her. Sherry, listen to me. Why? <clears throat> I have a very rainbow sparkly plate. Honestly, we did not have any other plates in my house. I don't know who did this. I'm painting Cherry with a blue color on her body and a tan color for her tart. I used two Posca paint pens to color in the berries, as well as a red Posca paint pen for the cherry drips around her tart. I also used Posca paint pens for the face and for the little hearts on the ears. I tried my best to create Cherry's eyeliner. It turned out a little wonky, but I did my best. 
and this is what her face turned out like. It's so hard to get details on something so small, so I was really happy with this. But then I added the gloss. It smeared. <gasps> oh no. I was so sad when this happened and I still can't figure out why it happened. I don't think Posca paint pens reactivate with water, so maybe it just wasn't dry, but I thought it was. I don't know. She's a mess, but she's still cute. And I was determined to not make the same mistake with Chip. If you don't know who Chip and Cherry are, I probably should have explained that earlier in the video, but they are my squishies. Chip is a mouse and Cherry is a cat and they kind of have a cat and mouse relationship going on here. Get it? Cause, cause Chip is a mouse and, and Cherry is a, she's a cat. So cat, cat and mouse. I try, what can I say? Once I had finished all the clay for Chip, I put him into the oven to bake. And no, I did not burn him this time. We're learning guys. On this Friday, November 26th to Sunday, November 28th, I will be having a Black Friday deal on my Teespring. Enter the code BELLA10 and you'll get 10% off. So if you've been wanting to get my merch, this is the time to check it out because there's a, there's a discount. Because I didn't really want to go through the trouble of mixing all these different paint colors, I did end up using a lot of Posca paint pens. I colored in the whites of Chip's eyes as well as his nose and his tongue. And then I tried my best to do the detail work for the face as well as the sprinkles on top of Chip's ice cream. After that, I added some highlights and then brought the gloss back out. I made sure it was dry this time. I patted it with my finger and it didn't really smear at all. And here's what the Chip Mini came out looking like. I forgot his chocolate chips, so I did add that to his ears after the fact. And I really like this one. I think it came out cute. Here is Cherry with her squishy and Chip with his squishy. Although they're a little bit messed up, I do honestly kind of like them. I really like the rose because I don't know. The rose I'm just shocked that I even made. I don't even know how I made that. I'm honestly more proud of the minis because they were so hard to make. Here is my ordering from best to worst. Cherry looks like she's been crying in the club. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to check out Joseph's part in this collab. This is an ominous arrangement. It looks like we need just like a smaller rose right there to complete it. Ah! Bye. Hey.